This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so good morning, everyone. We This is Linda Heimberger, the Outreach and Training Coordinator for the DISCUS program uh, here at the State Library. I am presenting on Novelist Plus today using appeals and themes. Um, in this session, we're going to actually learn what they are and ways that they can be uh, incorporated in uh, particularly into your reader's advisory. Um, got a couple of little questions for you at the top. These aren't ones that you necessarily need to respond to uh, in chat, but just to think about um, some little scenarios here. I tried to choose them for different uh, different ages and uh, different patrons. A young patron wants a funny Halloween book, but not scary. Um, in many cases, you can walk right over to your shelf. I'm sure, Marie, you could walk right to a shelf and pull one of these. Um, in some cases, you do that, and then the, the kid says, I already read that one, or, oh, that looks too scary, even though it, it may not be. So you have all of these situations where you, you're heading in the right direction for something, and then the patron may throw you a little curveball. Um, second one to think about as we work through these are a teenager wants an inspiring book about a courageous character. Again, some of you working in youth services, work, working at the high school, you may already know right away in your collection uh, exactly where to go. Or you may think, hmm, well, maybe I need to dig a little deeper. You know, are they looking for a primary yeah, male character, female character, you know, sometimes it can get very specific that way. And then in the uh, also in the public library, uh, an adult has read only one John Grisham book, but wants more like it. So this are only three kind of scenarios uh, that I've put forth today. And certainly you all are welcome to add in the chat maybe situations where you've tried to locate uh, a good book and um, you'd still like to maybe know another way to search for it, another way to access it. So do communicate with me and the group as, as you please there. So we're going to look next at um, what are appeals. And when you're working within the novelist software, you have genre, you have appeals, you have themes, and then you have um, subcategories within those uh, major categories. And I know that you are all very familiar with your genres, with your horror, your thrillers, your romances, et cetera. Uh, so that, that usually isn't a big, a big issue. But appeals are story elements that help readers determine why they enjoy a book and whether a particular book will fit their style. So the young child that wants something fun about Halloween but really doesn't want to be spooked too much, uh, for instance, you can use appeal in novelists to find books based on the type of character you like, the pacing or tone, or even the style of illustration. So again, um, you know, if you're looking for a sassy character or you're looking for a strong character, um, some of them are wanting specific um, types of characters like uh, female characters. So what are some examples of appeals? Well, I want to show you all, uh, you see the note there on your screen. These clips are from Novelist Downloadable Guide to Story Elements. And I'm going to show you at toward the end of this session this morning, I'm going to show you how you can download this. Um, it's about a 30, I think it's over 30 page document. Um, that's just really handy for you. And even though you can access it uh, easily by computer, you can certainly download it as a PDF to your device, to your own computer, um, even to your library computers. Or 
um, you can just do it the plain old fashioned way for your library where you print it out and put it in some nice um, plastic sheet covers and you just have it handy for when you are maybe doing collection development or when you are working one on one uh, with the patron. You can see on your left, you have character and tone. So when we're talking about appeals, it's always going to go back to what uh, what appeals to that reader's interest. So if you have a reader like my aunt who loves biographies, loves um, you know all the different genres, but then has specific appeal factors for those different types of books, um, you're going to be able to, to work with even your toughest patron on some of these. So character says only applied to fiction. So again, that's not going to be your nonfiction book uh, about Ben Franklin, for instance. Character appeal is especially for those readers who love books because of the characters. So that's really the strong part that they want to go for. Tone on the right is the feeling that a book evokes in the reader. You know, what are you in the mood for to read? Um, and that can vary as well. This is only two snapshots of this 30 page document uh, to which I had mentioned before. Um, so you can imagine you have a lot of choices there. You'll notice all the little orange, green, purple, blue dots. Those are going to re uh, respond to the age group. So the orange or adult, the green or teenagers. So you'll know whenever you go into what we call the appeal mixer, in novelists, you're going to know that you're going to have different appeals for different age groups. So you can see all age groups have something about ability diverse, but only your um, character duos are found in ages zero through eight at the bottom. Best friends to odd couples, these books feature dynamic duos who take on the world together. So the reason I mentioned that is when you're doing your searching, it may very well, well be that you get no results. And it's probably because um, maybe a particular appeal that you're searching on doesn't apply to the age group that you've limited it to. Here are some more examples, the writing style and the illustrations. So if they, you know, if you have a child who wants a cartoony book, um, that you know it may be cartoony sort of illustrations but they're really wanting a serious issue um, or subject like depression or something um, you can kind of get that specific in, in in your searching as well So how do I search by appeals? That's probably what you're asking. It's probably what you're here for. So you can actually go into the top of the software and we are going to go in live um, after we kind of go through these slides because this will help you see where everything is. If you've been a novelist before, you'll notice that it, it, it kind of looks a little crazy when you first go in because you have all kinds of good stuff on the left and award-winning books and you have how-tos and you have, um, you know, just all kinds of crazy. So we're just going to focus on where everything is first here. So there is a section at, at the very uh, top when you first go into the software um, where um, you can go to the appeal browse section that will appear in the software. If you want to open another tab in your on your uh, computer or your device, you're welcome to um, kind of play around in novelist as we talk about these things, if that would be helpful for you there. But you would first select an audience level, and then you're going to uh, go and select um, the different appeals that we have here, bittersweet and engaging, the next tab, suspenseful, world building and descriptive, creepy and atmospheric. So those are some of the ones that they already have laid out for you based on the um, more the age level of the reader. So 
So there's also a list of appeal combos, and some of these will appear at the bottom of your book records uh, that might pull up um, additional books that match on those appeals. Then if you don't want to just browse them, and sometimes that's all your patron wants to do is just kind of browse to see what's out there, but sometimes they do want something much more specific. And that's when you want to go into your orange navigation bar at the top of Novelist, and you want to use the appeal mixer. And so you would just go to browse by, you would choose appeal, and then you're going to see this little um, interactive uh, box that's going to allow you to go in and do these five steps. So number one would be selecting audience level, just like you did when you went to browse them. Number two would be select an appeal category. So that's where you're going to be looking at storyline, character, illustration, writing style, that kind of thing. When you select an appeal category on the left hand side, you'll then be able to select an appeal term from a drop down list. So you see on this first line, we have storyline and the options we're given for the adult age group. You'll notice our tab at the top still shows adult, are action packed storylines, intricately plotted, non linear, open ended, plot driven, unconventional, world building. So those, you're going to get a different list of appeal terms based on the category you choose and the audience level you choose. And again, printing out or downloading that uh, the little guidebook is going to help you know what is nonlinear or what is, you know, intricately plotted. Some of them are obvious, but um, it's just good to familiarize yourself with your options. Fourth, you will select additional appeal categories and terms. So if you know uh, that you know there, there are more than there's more than one aspect of appeal that your patron is looking for, you can add additional categories and terms. I will caution you just as whenever you're doing any kind of searching in a library, as you know, when you add more terms, you're really narrowing, narrowing, narrowing. So you could narrow yourself down to no results really quickly. Uh, in some cases. So that's just a word of caution. And then number five, click the Find Titles button. So I'm going to go ahead and move to this next screen for you to see um, that you can also search appeals using a field code. So if you just have a, a patron that's quickly running in, you know, running in, has a quick question, and you are already familiar with some of those appeal codes and you don't necessarily need the drop downs that we just showed you, you can just go into keyword and type that field code in all caps, AP, and then add whatever the patron has asked for. So if they say, I'm really in the, in the mood for a good book with a real sassy character in it. And you'll notice um, the very first one that appears here is a Janet Ivanovich. Um, and you are probably familiar with, with her books that went through the entire number system and G is for gumshoe and all of those fun kind of mysteries with the sassy detective, Stephanie Plum. Um, so you see there we have results it says it's showing one to 30 of 930 results of books for, um, uh, um, actually, if you notice to the left, I did not limit this one. You see your audience to the left, so I did not limit to adult. So there are 930 titles that have a sassy character in them. So if you wanted to then uh, refine your results to only those sassy character books for teens, you could filter that on the left. You can also filter by publication dates. And you'll see when we go live in a moment, you have other options as well. You might want to filter by uh, lexile level, reading level. So you'll notice in the book record for this, at the very bottom, it says series, Stephanie Plum Mysteries, and it tells you uh, there the 25. So you can see this one was published just in November of last year, and, it's, and it is in a book series. So if you have patrons who aren't familiar with Janet Ivanovich, which I can't imagine you know, a reader wouldn't be, but if they aren't, 
uh, sometimes that, that will be good for you to show them the series link where they can see all the books in that series. So in creating that, that's going to be the results that you can refine by there on your left. Oops, I think I went too far. There we go. Um, so those are appeal factors. And we're going to look next at themes. And then we're going to start kind of looking at the records of the book so you can see where these are located when you're looking at a book's description, title, um, and all of the themes that are connected to it. So themes, shifting gears here, themes are popular and recurring plot elements. So if you can just remember, themes are going to relate to the type of plot that is found in the book. They describe the overall plot, while the appeal terms, again, are sticking to storyline, tone, writing style, and those aspects that just appeal to a particular um, patron. So you have at the bottom the race against time in thrillers, fake relationships in the romance books, chosen ones in fantasy. There, like um, you find your um, uh, Frodo in your in your um, Lord of the Rings. He was the chosen one to carry forth and you know be able to get the ring back. So what are examples of some themes? So you can see on the right, I have a snapshot of that little booklet that I told you about. So life challenges, identity, experiences and behavior, narrative devices within the book, the setting, so anything that's playing into that plot. So um, Marie, I know that you do a lot of different book displays for things and probably all of you do to one, Agree, degree or another, uh, but this is yet another way you can identify some really good uh, books for your book displays as well. So we have like in the under romances, we have a secret baby, uh, a sudden baby becoming the guardian of a child leads to romance. Um, enemies to lovers, the line between love and hate, uh, friends to lovers, hating to dating, so you can see all of these different ones, um, love in a small town down at the bottom. So the setting is a small town, like your Hallmark movie kind of thing. So what are other examples of themes? This one is just from mysteries. So again, you've got um, eerie mysteries, you've got solve the puzzle kind of mysteries, uh, mysteries. Um, sleuths in schools, so it all ties into that plot. Oops. So how do we search by themes? Well, we have very similar searching uh, as we did for appeals. Uh, this first one is going to be browsing by. And if you remember, we in the orange navigation bar for appeals, we chose browse by appeal to get to our uh, appeal mixer and select by the drop down menus. For our themes, we are still going to choose themes there from our drop down in the navigation bar. And they can, your patrons or you can actually click on any of these topics, fantasy, realistic, Christian fiction, et cetera, to get into the genre. Because again, your, um, your themes are really going to be tied to genres based on those plots. I'm sorry, there's a loud truck out my window. I hope that's not distracting to you all. Um, so we've looked at browse fiction A to Z themes. So I just clicked on one of those images and you can see here that we then have themes that are within fiction A to Z books. So we got novels of place, musical reads, love on the rocks. So if you're doing something, maybe you're doing a feature about um, jazz music and you want to find uh, books that have a musical theme to them um, there. 
you can you can search that way. So when you do this and you click on it, it's going to give you a list of books that fall into those themes. And then you can narrow again by your audience level and those other um, filters such as publication dates or um, uh, the reading levels and such. So if we click on rags to riches here, the protagonist moves from poverty to wealth or obscurity to fame, uh, rags to riches kinds of stories in the fiction. Um, this is a result that we get. So we have 104 titles that are essentially rags to riches stories that you can see uh, there in the keyword. And as you may have guessed, just as with appeals, you can use the field code TH to get to your rags to riches stories. So if you wanted to do AP appeal for sassy character in a rags to riches story, you could do AP space sassy space TH rags to riches. And then try to see what you can come up with there as a result. And you can also search both your appeals and your themes in an advanced search. So if you are wanting to maybe um, um, be very specific about a reading level, or maybe you're wanting to tie it to a culture, maybe you're now, now you have the patron who says, oh, I really want a Native American, I want, a, 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 the, I want it to really be like a Native American angle on this sassy character with the uh, rags to riches story. So now you've got something even more specific. That's when you wanna dive into that advanced search and be able to go in and limit results by the cultural uh, aspect of it and the appeal and the theme. So you can choose themes um, and you can choose appeal factors. And each one you would put in a separate field. So you would choose a theme, type the keyword you want, choose a, uh, appeal and type the one that you want there. So the advanced search allows you to limit by Lexile range, whether it's an audiobook they want, the cultural identity, as we mentioned there, publishing date and more. And we're gonna look at that uh, in just a moment too. I am checking chat to see if I have anybody's, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just checking to make sure y'all, like I say, uh, let me know if you do have questions as we go through. So this is one where we've done an example of just that. We're searching, we want um, our theme to be about office life and we want the appeal factors to be amusing. So the first book that comes to my mind is Devil Wears Prada, but bet your bottom dollar that patron's gonna say, I already read that one. So you're wanting those that you can tie together that have those two, that, that appeal and theme factor. And what comes up here, um, since we've now been very specific about it, has to be uh, office life. The plot needs to be set around office life and be funny. Well, I say amusing because there's a difference in their um, words and you'll see that in the booklet between funny and amusing. But you look at the top of this result record, you can see there are six books that have those limiters. And in the first one, you can see uh, that this one is a high profile TED talking power posing Silicon Valley mother finds her overscheduled life turned upside down blah, blah, blah. So that might very well be something that really fits the bill for that patron. And if it's not, you can just click on the title read alikes below it uh, and see if there's something else that appeals to that patron. So this is the piece that I wanted to show you all about downloading. You can even do this now if this is the only few moments you have before you're back out at the desk and you want to go ahead and do it, you can certainly, um, like I said, uh, open a new tab, go into your Novelist Plus and um, 
follow me and, and just download it now. But you want to go up into your navigation bar uh, and choose how do I. You can just hover over that. And then you want to choose your find books by appeal, genre, or theme. So this is how you download that booklet. Find books by appeal, genre, or theme. It's going to take you to this page you see at the bottom of your screen. And you're just going to click on that link that says learn more about story elements and download our guide. And this is what you're going to find when you click on that link. You're going to see you can download a copy of the Secret Language of Books, a guide to story elements. And you'll see the little green circle on the cover says in 2019 expanded edition. So as they expanded more appeals uh, and more, more searching points, uh, they've updated the book really recently. So these are a couple of more pages out of the books. Again, where we've got the sassy character, the strong female, the twisted character, the believable character, the awkward character. And then back to the writing styles. So you want a real candid style or you want a conversational style. So I'm going to pause for just a moment, see if there are any questions or comments and anything that you've seen, or maybe if you've been playing around in it, if you have questions. Feel free to type anytime, because sometimes I know um, it, it's kind of awkward because you feel like, well, she's talking now again, I better not type it. But just type away if you do have a thought that you want to put in there. So we're back to our young child that we started with at the beginning of this session and the, the one that wanted the funny book about Halloween that's not scary. So if you look at this screen, this is actually the screen that I was telling you that kind of gets kind of crazy because you have all these different things you can do when you first enter Novelist. You'll see at the top that we uh, simply typed in our keyword Halloween. We wanted that to appear somewhere in as a keyword in the subject, in the title, in the description, somewhere. We've limited it to ages zero to eight since it's a child. And then on the bottom left, you'll see that we've we're going to click on funny because we want the funny aspects of it. And that's when we get these results. Notice right now, when I first had Halloween typed in, there were over 2,400 books. You see that there in purple as the results. So once I've narrowed it by age and by appeal, um, you can see we're down to 168 as opposed to your 2,000 there. And you can see the Lexile levels here, if that's uh, you know an issue for them, if they're just wanting a fun book for once and they don't have to worry about that, that's great too. But you can then see all the records that are available with those particular filters on them. So then we have our teenager who wanted the inspiring book about a courageous character. And you can think about now, now that you know about using appeals, how you can pull uh, this information. You can go into your appeal mixer. You can choose teen first, obviously, character, courageous. And the tone of the book needs to be inspiring. So when you do this mixer, again, if, you, if it says no results, and it'll say it in this little... Um, virtual post-it note that you see on the right, it'll say, oh, sorry, there's nothing there. You know, you might have to go back and change courageous. You might have to change inspiring to another word that's similar. Maybe a book is still there. It's just not exactly those terms, you know. Um, so again, that's just part of the revision process. 
So these are the results that we have for courageous characters and inspiring tones. We have three books for the teenage level. I Am Change, Will Rider. And I'm just going to pull this record for you to be able to see now when you're looking at the books, you can see where in the record you're going to find these uh, appeals. Um, the courageous one, um, the tone inspiring. It might be at this point that your patron says, ooh, I don't really like the haunting part of that book. So that's going to be something that you're going to want to go back and work through, perhaps choose a different uh, but very similar appeal, like inspiring, um, but not, um, you, know, ha you know, to try to find something that's not haunting because that's something they don't like. It's one thing you can count on. Your patrons are always going to know what they like and don't like and, um, and let you know it too. So that's always good. You don't have to do a whole lot of, of questioning back and forth. So for that last patron we had, as an example, the adult that says uh, a book like the one uh, the patron read by John Grisham. So she only read one. So that's telling me she doesn't really know a whole lot about all of his works. But if, if you all will type there in the chat for me, I would like this interaction for this piece. Um, what are some of the appeals and even if you don't know yet exactly what are what the appeals are in novelists, but what are some of the appeals or themes that you know uh, about John Grisham books that in reality you would probably st start steering your patron in that direction? If you'll just type a few keywords there in the chat um, about uh, that that you would think of as soon as a patron says, you know, I want another, I read this book and I want more. Oh, good, excellent, Kristen. Glad to hear it. Okay, Marie says law would be one. So somebody might, the appeal might be um, the, um, you know, legal side of it. That might be what they want more of. Kristen, mysteries. Okay, so we've got um, a couple of aspects of what we know about this author. And then you get that curveball because you start naming off the firm and all these exciting things about law and the lawyer and the mysteries that he solves. And um, they read a, a book, but it wasn't any of the typical ones we know of John Grisham. It happened to be a book they found at a Friends of the Library sale. And it was this one. Are any of you familiar with this title by David Baldacci? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think I, um, yeah, I think I just messed that up because I said John Grisham. But I was thinking David Baldacci. So, if I said David Baldacci, type in some keywords that you would say about David Baldacci, if you're familiar with his works. He's very prolific. He also has the law theme. So with Baldacci, you have a lot of mysteries. He was a lawyer also, that author, so he has a lot of mysteries there. But the particular book that this patron read from David Baldacci, and I'm sorry again, not John Grisham, but it could happen with him, I don't know. This particular book, what your patron ended up liking about this book maybe wasn't that it was um, um, a law-based book, even though it is, because it does involve a trial. But maybe what your patron really liked about it was the fact that it was bittersweet and the fact that it was moving or the fact that uh, they had complex characters, which you can see in this, um, in this record.
So you can look and now browse the read-alikes for this book. So this was one that was really out of the um, typical genre, the typical uh, writing that David Baldacci has done uh, with the Painted House and some of the other ones. This one was set in uh, New York City and the mountains of Virginia in the 1940s with some young characters, Lou and Oz, leaving New York with their mother and heading to live at their great grandmother's farm. So what this pa what appealed to this patron wasn't necessarily the court case part, but maybe something else. So you can see, again, you can select read-alikes for this book. And you can see those on the right-hand side. If, if they do throw you for a loop, maybe there is a John Grisham book out there that isn't his typical kind of thriller mystery. So that's some of the read-alikes there. What, you, what is nice is you can scroll to the bottom of the screen and be able to now have that discussion with your patron. If you found out, oh, they really don't want like the mysteries of John Grisham or they're really not into uh, the thriller part, but there, maybe there's something else that appeals to them about that book that they now want a book uh, that's similar, you can um, scroll to the bottom of that record that we saw for Wish You Well. And you have these choices that you can now drill down and say, oh, okay, well, tell me what aspects you did like about that particular book. And, the, and she says, oh, I love it set in the 40s. That's when I was growing up and, and the fact it was farm life. And um, I really just like that. I just felt so nostalgic when I was reading it. Those are the kind of things where you can now say, oh, so she didn't like, it wasn't necessarily the typical why we think most people will read a Baldacci novel. And you can revise the search that way and now locate other titles that have those sort of specifics um, about them. So those are different ways to browse and search, do some advanced searching, search for more. Um, I'm gonna quickly give you a little discus spiel and then we're gonna go live for about five minutes here and show you um, if you all want me to do some specific searching examples or I can show you um, again live some other pieces of, of the database. Uh, but you can see at the scdiscus.org page, if you're not at a school library, but at a public library, you might not be aware of some of uh, the helps that we provide for all of you, really, uh, through our scdiscus.org interface. You can see here um, on the left, the About Us section at scdiscus.org will give you um, different technical requirements, accessing DISCUS, other things about DISCUS. Here, the training tab will give you access to our training calendar, which you had to have uh, known about in order to, to be here. Had you not been able to attend today, you could go into our online archives and see the recorded version of today's session. And you can also see any of those that have gone before. And then there are also training resources with search helps and breakouts of subject sheets and other types of PDF files that can help you if you're doing any training in your library. And then finally, there's the Contact Us section on the SC Discus uh, menu as well on the far right. So if you are working in a database and something's acting crazy, you can email Discus Office. That's our help desk. So um, all of the staff here, the two of us, would receive that and we'd be able to help troubleshoot any issues you have. Um, if you uh, want to subscribe to our newsletter, that is an electronic newsletter uh, that we send out it's been about once a quarter. We're trying to get it to be once a month, uh, but that will give you updates about our Discus resources. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter where we frequently put out um, 
all kinds of marketing for the upcoming webinars. We put out any kind of new news we get. And we also do a lot of tie-ins to history and you know show you where you know it's national ebook reading day here's where you can find ebooks or that kind of thing so that is uh, just the interface i wanted to show you all there um, just for your uh, little toolkit you'll know that all that's available and again this is the facebook twitter and uh, e-newsletter uh, options And we are down to two members now. We had a third person who has moved over to Virtual SC, uh, but we um, uh, now have myself as the primary training person and Patricia Sinclair is our electronic resources manager. So if you do have any questions for us, either send it through the help desk or you can send it to us directly there. So I'm gonna hop out of the slides here and go back into uh, our, just out to our Discus platform. An easy way to jump in from our platform is um, through the A to Z list, which is what we'll do here. And you'll see that initial screen uh, that I mentioned to you, I'm in the mood for books that are. So that's where your appeals come in. So if your patron doesn't want to fiddle with all the advanced searching, um, that is fine because this is a great way for them to go through and browse the different um, tabs here, um, different genres, uh, award-winning books that uh, have a strong sense of place or are suspenseful. Notice to your far right, these are carousels, so there are arrows where you can scroll through them. There, and again, you can see if somebody says, oh, I've read this book, I would like to see what else might be uh, a similar read I would like to read uh, from the Roadhouse here. So they can click on the Roadhouse, they can find that it does not indicate it's a series. It's just a standalone novel. And they can see those read-alikes along the right that I showed you. They can see that this is a fast pace, strong sense of place, suspenseful and compelling book with a likable character. So those, uh, when I showed you the screens, I'm just gonna jump back to Novelist. Once you've done a search, it's best to clear out whatever you've searched so that you get a good clean your start when you, when you go to search again. But the advanced search is found right below that keyword search entry. Um, if you did wanna go in and you have a school child who needs a Lexile level or an accelerated reader level book, you can do it that way. That mixer is the browse by appeal. So if we wanted to go in there um, and find, um, maybe find a tone of a, a bittersweet tone of a book here, and maybe find uh, a character who is introspective. Again, you can pull all those together, you can change to adult and teen, um, you definitely want to choose that audience first because if I were to choose teen and introspective, for instance, isn't an option for teen, obviously it wouldn't be there, but I'm gonna click on teen here. I'm gonna go back uh, to my tone and pick the bittersweet one. I'm gonna go back to, uh, my character here and you can pick any here just to see what might be available and then find titles and you see there are three there on the right that fit the bill for that for a teenage reader. 
I'm going to just jump into the advanced search real quickly to show you. This is how this is much more used by you as a librarian, because if you are doing a book display or whatever, you're not going to want to necessarily look at all the images and click and all that and browse. You might want to just jump right in and say, you know, I really need some that are very recent. So I need to make sure these aren't any older than 2017 to 2019. So you can set that right away. Um, or I'm just doing an award-winning display, so I want to add that. Um, on the, down on the left, when we mention cultural identity here uh, on the left, Austrian, Belgian, Brazilian, so you have all of these different cultural uh, related books. If you're doing something for um, um, Cinco de Mayo and you want to pull up you know, a particular culture, you can do that. If they're really looking for audiobook formats, they're on the bottom left. So you can play with all of these different options when you do are doing your searching. And then the how do I again is where you're going to find that book, um, the the um, the little downloadable book. And then you can also use these other how tos to find read alikes and other things. So one last thing I'm going to show you because we're just about out of time is I want to show you on the left when you first open uh, Novelist Plus, you're going to have lots of other options too that are very helpful to you as a librarian if you if you do have some moments on the desk where you can check these out. The four fans of that you see here are great if you have somebody that comes in and says, oh, I love the Longmire series, or I love the Outlander series, or Game of Thrones, you can go to four fans of, and you can find those uh, books that are similar for fans of Game of Thrones here. Um, for Black Panther, This Is Us, if they like that TV show. So you can always play with some of these other things in addition to your appeals. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. Uh, if there are any other uh, comments or questions, if anybody has, you're welcome to add them there. You can always email me if something comes up later. Um, you're welcome to do that too. Well, I hope you picked up some good ideas uh, about how you can use this. You can use it with your book clubs. You can use it with your, uh, as Marie mentioned with, uh, you're welcome, Marie. Uh, you can use it as she mentioned also with collection development, if you're look, you know, looking to fill some holes there. And we hope to see you all in our next webinar. Thank you, Kristen.